It's the stuff you want to read about, but then when you do, you really wish you didn't. It's top 10 dark journals from history. Number 10, Madame Curie. She was a Polish and French scientist who studied radioactivity. She's also the first woman to ever win the Nobel Peace Prize. Oh wow. I mean, this lady was working on x-rays, isotopes, radiation, you name it. She was doing it. There's a reason she's so well remembered. So, like most eggheads and nerds, she kept a lot of notes. Tons of them, too. However, her journal is where all the good stuff is. All the juicy knowledge ripe for the reading. Trouble is, it's not advised to pick it up and read it. In 1934, Madame Curie passed away from a plastic anema, likely from all the radioactive material she was handling over the years. Her journal is the same way and is very radioactive, even today. So today, it's stored in multiple lead-lined boxes in France because, well, it's probably going to stay radioactive for many years to come. Number 9. Nelson Mandela The man, the myth, the legend. In the 1960s, America said, hey, you know what? This whole judgment on the skin color thing isn't cool anymore. So the civil rights movement was born and they made great strides in making things better for everyday black Americans. Love it. Love when the, I love when the good guys win, you know? It's a good thing. South Africa said, yeah, not yet, bro. I don't think so. That's more English than South African, but we're going to go with it. Naturally, there were leaders who opposed this insensitivity, like the great Nelson Mandela, who was in prison for 27 years for his beliefs, which is just insane. I knew he was in jail, but not for that long. That's crazy. He has written many books, but Long Walk to Freedom, published in 1994, depicts his early life and his struggles with the South African apartheid, and of course, spending many of those harsh years in prison. Seriously, that's a long time, man. 27 years for just saying, hey, maybe we shouldn't be mean to other people? That's kind of crazy. Number 8, Leonardo da Vinci. Da Vinci, Raphael, Michelangelo, Donatello, turtles in a half shell. Just kidding, it's the forefathers of the renaissance. Brand new ideas, respects for the ancient classics, engineering, and of course, the art. Oh baby, the art. Leonardo, however, was a bit of a jack of all trades. The man had a notebook just full of information, brimming full. Some of which was disturbing subject matter, naturally. This, well. I wouldn't be talking about it if it wasn't here. However, what I find extremely weird and possibly dark was that a lot of his notes were written backwards, so that way, the only way to read them was to view the notes via a mirror, which is kind of strange. Very strange, actually. That and a grasp of 1500s Italian you would need as well, because it's probably written and I didn't speak English. It said he did this in order to not smudge his writing since he was left-handed. Okay, sure, but why not all the writings in that case? Sounds like he was leaving clues behind, but for what? Hmm, I wonder. Where's Nicolas Cage when you need him? Or Tom Hanks, because he did a Da Vinci movie. So yeah, maybe him, get him on the case. If he'll solve something. Mm. Number seven, OJ Simpson. Generations before me would remember OJ as the juice. A very impressive rookie record and his performance in the mid 70s NFL is something worth noting. A short career in acting and having a role in one of my favorite movies of all time. The Naked Gun, with starring Leslie Nielsen, also a fellow Canadian. Uh, he then got a little bit naughty in the 1990s. One night, his ex-wife Nicole Brown and friend Ron Goldman were de-lifed in a cold-blooded de-lifing. Immediately, people looked at him, which, to be fair, it most likely was OJ. However, if the glove don't fit, you must acquit. Say it with me, folks. And so, he wasn't charged with a horrible crime. So. That's why only a few years later, he wrote a book called If I Did It. Because, you know, that's how things work. A book describing hypothetical ways he could have committed the crime. Sometimes the answers are right underneath your nose, folks. It's right there. You just gotta grab it sometimes. Just, just gotta take it. Number six, the Marquis de Sade. The Marquis de Sade was a French nobleman, revolutionary politician, philosopher, and a writer famous for his literary works that included plays, dialogues, scripts, novels, and political tracts. Okay. Sounds great, Chetty. I can hear you at home saying it. But why is he on this list? Well, that's because a lot of his works were, uh, they were naughty, very, very naughty. The naughtiest of, the sauciest of naughtiness. Mm, yes. It's kind of like when you have a substitute teacher and all the boys are chilling in the class being naughty. You don't even get to run the back, just being rowdy. And of course, this stuff was written in a time when uh, even showing ankles could drive a man insane. Trust me, if you look it up, 
you would understand I can't talk about it exactly. The guy did some other naughty stuff as well, which I can't talk about either because it's bad, but just know that he was down bad and he was arrested for it. It, it doesn't get much darker than his writings, although he did have a point with the freedom thing, so there you go, look at that. Number five, John Wayne Gacy. And here's the reason why people are afraid of clowns. I actually studied clowning in college. It's a lot harder than you think. You can put together hours worth of a great performance and just have the crowd roaring. You meet the next audience, use the same material, and nothing. Crickets. Or sometimes you just fart in front of a camera and people lose their mind. It's hilarious. I don't know. That's how it goes sometimes. Speaking of clowns using material, John Wayne Gacy used bodies as concrete to fill in his basement. Oh, that's great, man. John Wayne Gacy was a man who dressed up like a clown, promptly named Pogo, because you gotta make it horrifying, and he would entertain people at parties. He's also responsible for a body count of 33 young men. Naturally, he wrote a book about it because that's what you do. A Question of Doubt tells us that John Wayne Gacy is innocent, and that there were other people that put bodies in his basement and covered them in concrete, as well as police and media being a bad influence on him. Only 500 copies were ever printed, so uh, get them while they're hot, folks. Number four, Jean Paul Merritt. Back to the French Revolution. The monarch was collapsing, people were starving, and heads were rolling, literally. It was a tough time, especially for those in the peasant class. People were fed up. This included the author, scientist, and journalist Jean-Paul Marat. Marat? Merit. Merit. Sound like, a, like an American merit. This included Jean-Paul Merit. When things were falling apart and the aggressive Jacobin Club was forming, he helped by writing crucial anti-monarch works. Friend of the People was probably his best. All for liberty, friends. There's certainly too much to cover here, but what's most notable and important, and something you guys will remember for a while, is that he had a rare skin condition, so a lot of his work was actually done from the bathtub as he was having a good soak, as they say. He was also assassinated in the tub as well for his work, so yeah, that kind of, I mean, that adds up, sure. Number three, Marilyn Monroe. Audiences today may not recognize the name, but there wasn't a man alive back in the day that didn't know her. She was the first Playboy model and one of, if not the most beautiful women to ever live. Well, her diaries released in 2011 tell a different story from the smiling lass that we see in posters and images. Her writings have great strengths and sadness, a great struggle, if you will. To those that really know her, it may not have been a surprise, especially her struggles with alcohol and other uh, illicit products. You can see both sides of her in her diary. The darkness and pressures of being her, and also the bright and bubbly star she was so known for. Also seems to jump out right out of the page. That's, that's kind of nice though. She was kind of bubbly. Number two, Heath Ledger. Today he's remembered for his performance of the Joker in The Dark Knight, and it'll never be beaten, so don't try. A lot of people do that in auditions. Don't try to be him. You can't. It won't happen. But he was in a fair share of other movies, too. A lot of, lot of rom-coms. He's kind of cute. But we are talking about his diary from when he got his role as the Joker in The Dark Knight. It's, it's, it's kind of his whole thing. While the full diary has never been fully released, the stuff we got is disturbing. Notes written on the Joker describing what kind of monster he is. Locking himself in a hotel in London for weeks trying to find the voice of the Joker. Find the Joker. As an actor, I can respect the lengths that he went to for the character. Given the opportunity, hell, I might even do the same. Hollywood, call me please. But he went a little too far in this one, and it seemed it played a part in his demise as he perished not too long after the movie. It's pretty sad. Number one, Virginia Woolf. One of the greatest and most influential writers of the 20th century. Very creative for the time, if you will. However, she may have suffered from mental illness. Now, that's not a bad thing. Everyone, everyone struggles once in their life. That's okay, get the help that you need. You know what to do. However, the bad thing is that this was the 1940s, and to be honest, if she hadn't been an extremely successful writer, she most likely would have been locked away in an asylum for her behavior. She was institutionalized a couple times, but never permanently. It was suspected to have been bipolar disorder. Her journal entries are very peculiar, and I'm doing my best to make sense of it, but it's gonna require my grade 11 English skills to infer what the writer is saying, and I'll have to use those little sticky notes to make my reader's notes, as Miss Middleton would say, because that's something she always told me to do, make your little reader's notes, but unfortunately, yeah, she she didn't she she didn't she checked out by herself, unfortunately. 
Thanks so much for watching, guys. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe here at Bumblebee for more. Yeah, and if you too want to make readers' notes with me, like Grade Eleven English, then check out my show. Then check out my social somewhere down below. Just Big Chad ninety seven on Instagram, baby. Come and get it. Come on over. Come on over. Click the like button, the follow. I'll see you guys soon. Stay sweet, my little honeybees. Bye. It was suspected to have been pipe. Pop up. It was at the <laughs> ship. Oh, how you doing there, boy? <laughs> da Vinci, Raphael, Michelangelo, Donatelle. Donatelle?